Roblox just released a new ban API, which can do some really cool things like creating and customizing your own bans in your own game. You can even record a ban history of any player just by looking up their user ID. And an additional cool feature Roblox has added to this is being able to automatically ban suspected alternative accounts from your game. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to implement all of these things inside of Roblox Studio so that you can moderate your game officially. And I think this will be a very interesting one, so let's get straight into it. All right, so I've loaded up the game that we're going to be using, and what I'm going to do is insert a script inside of server script service, and I'm also going to locate our player's um, service. Then we're going to make a player added event so that we can detect when the player is joining the game. So when the player joins the game, what we're going to do is wait for about 10 seconds before the player gets banned right away. And the function that Roblox has given to us to ban this player is called ban async, which lies in the player's service. So we're going to say players colon ban async like this. And what's going to be contained inside of here is a dictionary called config that's full of information that we're going to need for this ban. So we're going to need to, so we need to create this table beforehand by going up here, we're going to create a config dictionary like this. And there's four pieces of information that we need for this ban. And there's two optional pieces of information that we can add to this configuration, which I'm going to be showing you right now. So the first one is going to be the user IDs of, of basically all the players that we're going to be banning inside of the game, which takes in a table. And we're going to put in the player's user ID just like this. Next thing is the duration, which is it, which is however, which is the number of seconds that the player is going to be banned for within the game. Uh, we can put negative one if we want this to be a permanent, if we want this to be a permanent ban, and we have to use unban async if we want to bring them back into the game. So in this example, we're going to put 30 seconds. Next piece of information is display reason, and this is what's going to show to the player if they try joining into the game while they're banned. So we can say something like, you violated the first rule. And then we have a private reason, which is basically uh, what is only shown to the developer if there's like additional context to the ban uh, that only the developer should know. So it can be something as simple like um, they used uh, a third party uh, hacking tool to fly around the map or something random like that. I, I don't know. It's just an example. Uh, so these are all of the pieces of information we need, but there's two optional um, pieces that I'm going to be showing you. The first one is exclude alt alt accounts. And basically what this does, it bans any suspecting alternative accounts that try to join into the same game if one player gets banned. So by default, it's false. But if we set this to true, then that means Roblox isn't going to try and detect any alternative accounts that may try to join into the same game. And then finally, we have apply to universe, which basically bans the player from every single place that is contained within one game. Uh, if we, let's say, teleport one player to another place, then they're going to be banned from all of the places within the same game. So if we set this to true, then that's what's going to apply. And this is basically our entire configuration. So we could just throw this down here uh, in ban async. And now we are almost done because we have to wrap this in a P call because ban async could potentially fail. So we need to make sure that if it does fail, we handle it properly. So what we're going to do is say local success comma error message equals P call function open and close parentheses enter. Uh, and then we're going to take this ban async call and then we're going to return ban async just like this and now we have a finished ban async script now one thing that you need to know is that this will not work inside of studio so we actually need to upload so we actually need to publish this game to roblox so we're going to hit file and then we're going to hit publish to roblox if you haven't done that already and i will now meet you in the actual game okay so i've loaded into the game and after about 10 seconds then we should see a ban message that pops up and i think we should also be able to see it inside of the uh output as well yeah there we go so over here, it says you were kicked from this experience. You violated the first rule. So now if we leave the game, because this ban uh, applies for about 30 seconds, I'm going to go back to the game that we just published. And it says you were banned from this experience by the creator for one minute. Here's a message from the creator. You violated the first rule, which shows the display message that we've made inside of our configuration. So if we wait about 30 seconds, then we should be able to come back into the game like normal. All right, so it's been about 30 seconds, so I'm gonna hit 
play again and as you can see now we're able to join back into the game because 30 seconds have passed and we can play the game basically like normal so that is how you use ban async to ban players from the game but there are other methods i want to show you for this video we can unban players from a game using unban async so just for this example what i'm going to do is say game dot players colon unban async and it's going to take in a configuration table again, but this configuration table only has two pieces of information that we need. So um, what I'm going to do down here is write a variable by saying local config equals uh, curly brackets. And then there's two pieces of information. So the first one is the user IDs, and this is going to be the table full of information that we're going to use. And I'm basically just gonna use my own user ID for this example. Uh, and then down here, we're going to specify apply to universe if we want to unban them from one place or all places. So in this case, we're just gonna say true. And this is the only two pieces of information we need. So then we can put it inside of here with config. And basically what we can do is instead of uh, putting this inside of a script, we can actually copy this. Um, and then we can go into the game and put it inside the console output. So if I was to go into the game and then basically paste this code inside of the command line, then it's going to show right here. Um, now, the, obviously it's not going to work for this example specifically. Uh, you could do it in the output, that's one way. Um, but another way is just by doing it directly inside of Studio. So if we were to just uncomment this code that we had here, and then we published the game and then we played it, then it's going to automatically unban these players from the game since this ran uh, inside of the script. Now, another interesting thing we can do is get a record of all the bans and unbans that have happened within one game. And we're going to be and we're going to be doing this with a method that Roblox has provided to us. So I'm actually going to just comment out everything we've made up until this point. Uh, I'm also going to comment out the unban code as well. And I'm basically just going to leave space up here for uh, the next thing we're going to be doing. So first thing I'm going to do is make a task dot wait for about five seconds or so. And then what I'm going to do is say local success comma ban history equals p call function open and close parentheses enter. And what I'm going to do is return players colon get ban history async open and close parentheses. And we're going to specify the player's user ID. So player dot user ID just like this. And what we're going to do is say if it was successful, then we're going to get the page of a ban of the ban history because the thing is it returns a ban history page instance so we need to be able to get a table full of information from that ban history page so we can go through each one of them as like a list so here's what it's going to look like we're going to say local page equals ban history colon get current page open and close parentheses just like this and page basically returns uh, multiple tables full of different bands that have different bands and unbands that have happened so we're actually going to be using two loops for this uh, example so we're going to say for i ban table in pairs page do and then we're just going to print the number with the band table just like this and then we're going to loop through the band table itself so we're going to say for key value in pairs band table do we're then going to print out the key and then the value just like this and this is basically how we use get ban history async from doing it like this and then what i'm going to do down here is basically just separate uh each entry just like this um it doesn't really matter like what this is but yeah that's like a, a way we can separate each entry so that's more readable Okay, so I'm going to hit save, and then what we're going to do is publish the game to Roblox, and then I'm going to meet you inside of the actual game. Okay, so I've loaded into the game, and if we go inside the output, so we go to the server output, then we can see uh, a list of every single ban history that's uh, within the game. Um, ignore these ones down here, this was kind of for testing purposes, um, but the ones up here are the interesting ones. So we basically, so if we were to decipher what's happening with, with each of them, uh, it's first going to say um, like what ban this is. So it's going to say whether this was a ban, so it's going to be true if it was a ban or false if it was just an unban. Place ID, if it's negative one, then that means there wasn't any specific place ID that the player was banned in. Um, then there's the private reason, then there's the display reason, and then the duration, and then when the ban took place as well, which is in a specific time format. And this is the information that we can use inside of our game, either placed within a GUI, uh, or we could take this information and um, put it inside of a Discord server channel, or we can even export this information and put it inside of a 
and put it inside of a spreadsheet as well. There's a lot of things you can do with this piece of information. This is essentially how we record ban histories using the method that I described in this episode. So to demonstrate the alt account detection, I basically made a quick script that excludes, that doesn't exclude alt accounts like this. Now that I'm inside the game, let's wait about 10 seconds and I should be banned from the game just like this. So I was kicked from the experience. What I'm going to do now is go on my alt account. So I'm currently on my alt account, Blastberg. And if I were to join the same game, uh, it's going to say that I was banned because I created or used an account to avoid an enforcement action taken against another account by the creator of this experience. Uh, and this is the result of trying to play the same game uh, on an on a different account on the same machine. Um, because I did not exclude alt account detection and this is basically how their system uh, works. So it's a pretty cool feature and this is just something quick I wanted to show you. So I want to end this video off with a demonstration with using bans for my alt account. So basically what I did was I created a ban command script where if I type a command in the chat, then it's going to use the new ban API to do um, what the command tells it to do. So I have one for banning players, I have one for unbanning players, and I also have one for getting the history of other players as well. So this is a little something I whipped up here, and now I'm going to demonstrate this inside of the game. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to ban my alt account by going onto the chat saying slash ban and then I'm going to paste in the ID of my alt account. So I'm just going to do this really quick. And then what we should see here is you were kicked from this experience. You violated the first rule. So I'm going to leave the game and I'm going to try joining back really quick. And it says that you were banned for one minute. Now, if I were to go to the game and unban um, my alt account, so if I were to say slash unban uh, the account, and if I leave the game and try joining back, then it's going to allow me to join back into the game. And don't worry, um, it was not because I waited a minute for the ban to finish. Uh, I made sure to do it right away. So now what I'm going to do is type in slash history and then give the ID of my alt so that we can return a list of the history behind the banning and unbanning of my alt account. So the most recent ones were these two right here. So the ban was set equal to true uh, because they violated the first rule and it lasted 60 seconds. So then I unbanned my alt account using, um, using the unban command that I created and that's how they were able to join back into the game. So this was a little demonstration that I have for um, for using the new ban API. If you want the source code to this ban command script, I'll have something in either in the description or in the comments of this video for you to uh, experiment with and use if you want. But that's a little something I wanted to show before ending off this video. Now, Roblox encourages you to create your own guidelines so that players know what they can do and what they cannot do so that if they do something wrong and they get banned for it, then they know what they did wrong. And obviously when you're creating these guidelines, uh, it should follow like the terms, the terms of service, terms of conditions or whatever it is Roblox wants you to follow. Um, through either in game or inside the game's description before you play the game. So if you were to, let's say, uh, create a frame uh, that basically just shows like a list of all the rules or something. So if I were to have a text label that basically says like, uh, I don't know, rule number one is don't um, fly around the map or something just as random as that. So this is rule number one. And if you break this rule, then you are basically banned from this game for this amount of time because of it. So if you're clear on that, then users can do that. Now, I believe you don't have to specify every single guideline. Like there can be some that are just a no brainer. Like if you were to no clip, then obviously that is bad and you will be banned for it. But if it's some simple stuff, like don't try to go through invisible walls on the map or something, or something as tame as that, then specifying the rules uh, somewhere is definitely good. Whether that's going to be an in-game GUI or whether that's going to be in the description of the game, or it could even be somewhere else, like in a Discord server's channel or inside of like a Twitter thread or something. It could literally be anywhere. But as long as you specify the guidelines for your game, uh, if you're going to be throwing, if you're going to be banning people for reasons that should be bad, then that's going to be uh, helpful for your game. And that is something I encourage you to do. Now, one final thing. Now, one final recommendation I have is making your own ban appeal system. 
Uh, Roblox doesn't have an official feature for this, but you can make your own either using like a Discord modal or like a Google Forms um, or using like a Google form or like something related to that. You can even like DM the creator specifically, depending on uh, what the, the creator of the game specifies for any ban appeals. Now you don't have to have ban appeals, but it's just something that you can add inside your game as well. Uh, if people were mistakenly banned for something that they were uh, not meant to do and things like that. So that is another thing that you can try adding inside of your, your game. So that's another thing you can try adding inside of your game. Uh, if you want to make this ban system as good as possible. If some of the scripting concepts here confused you, like pages and p calls, then I have a tutorial on ordered data stores for you to watch right here. Uh, if you want an in-depth guide on, if you want an in-depth explanation as to how these things work inside of your script. So go ahead and watch that, and that is basically going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.